Yesterday was my last day of finals, which means I have officially completed this semester and officially completed my first year of college. And that means it's summer and I am finally free to read whenever I want. Hey guys, it's Hannah and today I'm coming to you with my May wrap up. So May was my last month of school essentially and then my finals week was the very first week of June, hence why this wrap up is a little bit late. So I had a pretty busy month, but nonetheless I still completed five books, which I'm pretty proud of. Most of them were actually for school, but you know, that's fine. I really enjoyed a lot of them anyway, so I'm gonna share them with you guys. So the first two books I read this month were for my English class, and the first one was Franz Kafka's The Metamorphosis and Other Stories. So for those of you who may not know, The Metamorphosis is the story of this man named Gregor who wakes up in his bed one morning to find out that he has been turned into a giant bug. And that sounds pretty weird, and it is a bit weird, but essentially the whole story is kind of like a metaphor for the loss of meaning in life and the disillusionment with society and kind of all of that like lost generation Hemingway style type of thing. And personally, I really enjoy Hemingway and that whole style of minimalism, so I did very much enjoy this and I ended up giving it a three out of five stars. The next book that I read for my English class was Flannery O'Connor's collection of short stories. I also did enjoy this novella as well because Flannery O'Connor has a very distinctive style and she writes about very similar themes and while I kind of struggled with some of the themes that she writes about and I didn't necessarily agree with a lot of them, I really appreciated her writing and the way that she was able to convey what she wanted to convey through her writing. It was just exceptional. And specifically my favorite story was A Good Man is Hard to Find. It's a wonderful, wonderful short story and it's shocking and just honestly not what you'd expect at all, but it's so, so great. And I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. So the next book that I read in May was for my sociology class, and that is Punished Policing the Lives of Black and Latino Boys by Victor M. Rios. The title of this book is essentially exactly what this book is about. The author did a study where he observed the lives of these boys who were living in Oakland, California in very urban environments, and he studied the ways in which society and institutions kind of police these boys' lives and hypercriminalize them, and it was a fantastic book. Because this is a nonfiction book, it's not exactly your most enjoyable or easy read, but I also think that it was an extremely important read. There were several times throughout this book where I cried, there were several times where I wanted to throw it across the room because I was so upset at what I was reading, and it made me feel a lot of emotions but I'm also very, very happy that I ended up reading it. I can't say that this was exactly enjoyable because it was very aggravating to read about a lot of these situations, but I also, like I said before, think that it was very, very important. So if you are interested at all in this topic, I definitely do recommend this one. And I gave this a five out of five stars. The next book I also read for my sociology class, and I promise this is the last book that I read for school, but that is Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt by Chris Hedges and Joe Sacco. I think I mentioned this book in a previous currently reading video, and I said that it was probably the most difficult book I have ever had to read. And that still stands true. I finished it and it is definitely the most difficult book I have ever read in terms of subject matter, but also definitely the most important book I have ever read. So the author Chris Hedges and the artist Joe Sacco, because this book is actually illustrated, it has like pictures and then it also has like comic strips and things, so it's actually a very, very cool format. But essentially the two authors set out and went around the US and interviewed different people living in different towns or cities, in different states, different environments, and kind of got an understanding of what life might be like for some people who live in the US who are not exactly represented in our modern day politics or in our society in general. This book deals with the environment, it deals with poverty, it deals with racism, sexism, pretty much any social problem you could think of, this book deals with it. It tells you the history of why these things are the way that they are, it tells you the way that these people are currently living, and then it also has some kind of call to action portions where it says what we could be doing to change things. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite books I have ever read, not because I enjoyed myself while reading it, because honestly I didn't. It was really, really hard to read. I cried a lot. It was honestly painful to read at times because I was so upset by what I was reading, but it is also probably one of the most influential books I have ever read in my life. I feel like it's a very, very important book and I would recommend it to everyone 
But once again, it is a very difficult book to read because of the subject matter. So if you do decide to go into it, please be aware of that because it's it's really, really hard. <laughs> Moving on to a much lighter note, the last book that I read in May was the first book in the Mistborn trilogy, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This was in my last currently reading video and actually like the day after I filmed that video I finished this entire thing because it was so good and I got so, so into it. For those of you who don't know, the Mistborn trilogy is a high fantasy adult series that takes place in this world where the Lord Ruler, who is kind of like the king and the almighty powerful evil guy, has essentially taken over the world and has been in power for thousands of years, I believe. And the world has been divided by the upper society people and the Ska, who are just like the poor, poverty-stricken, and essentially enslaved people. And also because this is a fantasy series, there's of course a magic system. And the way that the magic system in this series works is that people who have magical abilities can consume metals and then they can use that metal and it manifests into some sort of power. And most people who have powers can only use that one type of metal and they are called mistlings. But there are a rare few who are able to consume multiple types of metals and use all of the metals so they have multiple different types of powers and they are called mistborns. That's just like a general synopsis of this book because it gets like way way more complex because again it is like 640 pages and the next two are even bigger than that. But I absolutely loved this book. This was everything I wanted out of a fantasy book. You had magic, you had politics, you had a super interesting cast of characters, you even had a little bit of romance in there and it was just so good so wonderful. I am so excited to keep reading in this series. This is one of my favorite books I have read so far this year, if not my favorite book, and I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. So that is it guys for my May wrap up. I know I haven't been posting too many videos lately and it always bothers me whenever I go like a week or more without posting a video, but now that I'm finally on break I have way more free time so you will be getting a lot more videos from me. I also have some exciting news and stuff that I could share with you guys soon and I'm excited about that and I have some cool videos planned out, so I'm just really optimistic about this summer. So let me know in the comments down below what your favorite book was that you read in the month of May, and also let me know what book are you most excited to get to in June. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!